and we're back live from Amsterdam, live from ThingsCon 2017. Um, we've had a lot of guests today that did sessions and everything and uh, were on stage. And here's another one. Welcome back. You were here last uh, a year as well. Um, tell me your name and uh, tell me the session you did. Um, yeah, thanks for having me again. Um, my name is Dries de Roek. I come from Belgium, not so far from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, today I did a session together with Simone and Mora. Uh, on, the session was called the Battle of the IoT Card Decks. Or the Battle of IoT Cards, I think, officially. Okay. So that was a... I wasn't aware of any battle. We didn't really battle, mm -hmm. yeah. So it was a more of like a teasing title. Um, in the session, we tried to critically look at the value of uh, ID generation methods and techniques, which are available um, specifically for the IoT. Uh, there are a couple of them out there, and we just wanted to to like check with the public, like what's the value in this? Is this really something that we should be making as a community? Uh, or, is it, or is it basically reinventing the wheel once again? So that was kind of like the, the critical stance that we wanted to take on uh, these uh, ID generation toolkits uh, in, in the design process. All right, so what was, what was the verdict at the end of the session? Um, the, that the different, well, we, kind of, we introduced four different toolkits uh, and they all had their, their own strengths and weaknesses uh, and I think the biggest discrepancy between them is that you can either focus on something that is um, uh, that has a strong focus on education, like getting people to learn about this is a sensor, this is a, something that you can do with it, you can uh, connect it to some kind of database and you can do stuff with that. So but that's very much on the education side. Uh, and on the other end of the spectrum, uh, there are tools that are out there and they focus a lot more on the, um, like the figuring out what kind of future product might be interesting for a very specific company operating in a very specific domain. Uh, and the type of approach um, is, is very different. And we had the impression that some of the tools that we evaluated, that try to do maybe too much. Um, and the focus is not often very well defined, like who is the audience for this? Uh, where do you begin? Um, is this well, something so, that so is... So basically there's, there's a need for different tools for different purposes. Uh, it needs to be made very ex more explicit. Like it's, it's not clear enough. What, what do these tools bring to the table? Um, that, that's often the big question. And then it, they, the, the risk is that it all ends up into something mediocre in the middle. Um, so that's what we were off. Um, that was more or less the, the meta conclusion right. that we so, made. So as, as a layman, uh, uh, these, these tools are out in the, in, in the market. Uh, who, who makes them? What, what are they used for? Who uh, is using them? Yeah, um, that's indeed a very relevant question. Um, they are made by primarily, um, well, it's really, really, really interesting because the tools that we had, they were, we had a couple of tools made by researchers, so ac academic research, uh, and we had tools that were made by companies. Um, and they were struggling with the same kind of questions, so that was, that was interesting. Um, so one of the tools, for instance, was um, made by uh, Simone Mora, who works at the Technical University in Trondheim, uh, Norway. And he very much focuses on this educational part. So he runs workshops with this tool in an uh, educational setting. For instance, secondary school um, youngsters and introduce them to the possibilities of networked product. Right, so awareness and everything and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's more about indeed creating like what what can you do with it? What that is, that's how you think beyond your smartphone screen. That's kind of like the, the approach that is taken there. Uh, and then for instance, the tool that I um, made myself um, is called the IoT Ideation Card Deck. Uh, and that's something that I made from my work in a SME creative company in Belgium. Um, and we run workshops uh, with other with, with our clients uh, in in actual commercial project, so it's a totally different context. Um, and it's interesting to then compare how does that relate to each other and, and what are the challenges? Are they the same or are they different? So, right. yeah. So, 
And maybe there's a need uh, or, a, or a space for new tools. Yeah, that's, I'm really critical on that, actually. So uh, I, I don't think new tools are, pro are, are by per se the, the, the answer to uh, the challenges that we encounter. I, I think we all people that were in the workshop, and it was nice to see, is that they were all very constructively critical uh, about trying to figure out there's so much out there uh, how can we maybe focus on creating bridges between existing tools, existing design methods, which we may have been using for years already, uh, but maybe if we can recombine them in a clever way, um, we can come to something that, that, that is not necessarily wanting to push something new. Uh, and I think it's also something that Alexandra Deschamps-Sancino just mentioned in her closing words um, of the conference itself, is that we shouldn't let go of the difficult things. It, I, have, I have a little bit of feeling like you could say, okay, let's do a new tool. Um, but then my question would be, is that gonna solve the problems that we're seeing with existing design tools? So maybe it's, we need to hold on and- uh, Make them better. May improve them, make them better. And what I very much like today as well is that we were thinking across tools. So tools made by different institutions, made by different companies. We were trying to look outside of the industrial competition and trying to figure out how can we make this one story? How can we build bridges between the tools, between the companies, instead of focusing on everyone doing their own thing in their parallel lanes? Yeah. So that was something I really, really, really enjoyed and valued. Oh, good. So, so one of the, the, the main topics at uh, this uh, ThingsCon uh, conference is, is, um, is, is well, um, privacy, security, uh, ethics by, uh, by design, etc. Um, uh, do you, are, are these tools already equipped with that, or, or is it something that is half done or should be, could be better? Yeah, it's um, indeed something that is not considered enough in these tools. Um, and it's an explicit request that we also have been getting in various sessions that we've been running with that kind of tools to, yeah, it, that is the moment that you can also introduce and, and learn and educate people about what it might mean to design in an ethical way or design with um, privacy in mind. Because it can have a huge impact on the, 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 the final design. Yeah. Yeah, so what we also came to understand this morning was that um, you can make as many new IoT ideas as you can imagine, but it's very hard to evaluate, uh, or the tools that were on the table this morning at least, we're not really hinting at how do you evaluate something. Is this something that follows some kind of ethical guideline, or is this something that um, takes privacy into account? Uh, so linking back to, um, I think yesterday there were some workshops on um, privacy uh, and also on security aspects. Um, there was a lot of linking back to things that people saw in other workshops and they said they very much focus on, um, yeah, you should talk to those people doing that kind of work and bringing that into the ideation phase because it's often done as an afterthought. Uh, yeah, but the idea stuff. is now just to do it by design, just, uh, just, uh, just yeah. to start with it uh, and not afterwards uh, add it to it, but, uh, but really from the beginning start uh, thinking about how to incorporate it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also, I may, I, during one of the uh, earlier uh, talks I had, um, one thing came up. It said it's easy to say that you do ethics by design, mm. uh, uh, but what does that mean? Mm. Because there's, it, ethics, it's not, it's not like a, a digital component or something. It's not a, a zero or a one. Yeah. Um, uh, and in, and in, in actually, it can be influenced by different cultures or uh, or anything. I mean, ethics are, are a fluid kind of thing. So, so how would you deal with that? Um, yeah, that's. I have something I've been questioning myself um, for quite a while actually, like how you can indeed say like, okay, we should have some kind of evaluation moment where we question, is this an ethical product? But I, I to date, have, have no real... What's the framework? What, uh, how, do you, how do you test it? How do you... Yeah, um, I, I have to admit that I don't really have a, a starting point to, to get going on that. I, I very much enjoyed the talk that I had with um, Rob Heijman and Saskia Videler, who were here yesterday. I think they they have some they offer a, a good framework on how to go about with that. 
but it still requires a lot of effort to, to get into that mode of thinking. And a lot of knowledge. I mean, uh, uh, there's not many people that know much about ethics uh, um, yeah. and at a more abstract level. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, related to that, it's often what, what strikes me a lot is that the words um, privacy, security, and ethics are often mentioned as like one big blob. Um, but if you look at the actual content of them, they're all super different. Uh, and they require a very specific expertise that I have the feeling that not a lot of people are really able to, to work with, to, to, to point like, okay, now you're talking about a, a privacy issue, now you're talking about something to do with security, and no, this is, this is covered in, uh, in a more, this is, about, this is about social ethics or something. Um, I have to admit that I myself don't have the expertise to, to make that distinction. Uh, I would need to talk to people like Saskia or like Rob or other people that are here that have more, uh, that are like deep down into, into that, to that matter. Uh, yeah. And I think it's, a, it's a, we need to work together with the, the IoT community to figure out how we can understand that work better from the Internet of Things perspective. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's not happening enough yet. No. Which is also seen like in the tools that we were looking at this morning, there is very little mention of those topics at this moment. So, right. so yeah. there's work to be done there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you were here last year, you're here this year, so probably you will be back here next year. Uh, and, yeah, I hope yeah. so. Yeah. so uh, and you will bring uh, new toolkits that include uh, privacy, security, and, uh, and ethics. Or maybe I burned all the toolkits by then. Yeah. It could be as well. <laughs> but, uh, no. but seriously, if you, if you suppose you're back here next year, what would we talk about or your session about? What, uh, what would you like to discuss? Uh, I'm focusing a lot on uh, understanding the design process of uh, internet connected products. Um, and in my current research, I try to figure out how does, um, it was mentioned yesterday night by Geert Kortum as well, um, that uh, we are designing in, uh, when you're designing for the IoT, you're basically designing in an infinite loop. Um, things are never finished, things are never done. Um, it can always change, and it, this radically changes the way that we look at design. Uh, because you cannot say, okay, my artifact is now completed, I can sell it on the market. Basically, that's when the story starts in IoT. Um, because you can keep updating that software, which can, which can change the whole behavior of, the, of this physical product. Uh, and that's something I'm very much looking into right now, is to figure out how do companies nowadays go about with designing the physical and designing the digital at the same time. Um, and I want to, like, these, these toolkits, they have their little place in there somewhere. But next year, I would very much like to bring some kind of story on, yeah, what is the actual challenge here in the design process and how, how is it changing and what can we do to get a better grip, grip on this? All right. So I think, I hope it will be something about that. All right. Sounds very interesting. Well, thank you uh, again for being here. Okay. Thank you for watching. Um, this was another episode uh, live from ThinksCon 2017, live from Amsterdam. Stay tuned. We've got a couple more guests to talk to. So uh, um, see you later. <laughs>